Democrats, who were encouraging everybody to party in Chinatown just a month ago, are now launching an investigation into Trump's supposedly delayed response to the coronavirus, which will be reported on by the media, who were criticizing his travel restrictions back in January, but are now accusing him of not restricting them enough. Because in the middle of a pandemic that hasn't even hit its peak yet, all the left wants to do is play Monday morning quarterback. The problem is that doesn't really work, especially when you were the one dropping all the passes the night before. Having been completely useless during this whole crisis except to delay an aid bill for millions of Americans because they were trying to shovel in a bunch of pork, Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff are now saying they're going to open an investigation into the Trump administration's coronavirus response, accusing him of having a delayed reaction that cost countless American lives. I don't know what the scientists are saying to him. I don't know what the scientists said to him. When did the president know about this and what did he know? What did he know? When did he know it? That's for an after action review. But as the president fiddles, people are dying. Despite the fact that Nancy Pelosi was recorded saying this on February 24th. It's exciting to be here, especially at this time, uh, to be able to be unified with our community. Uh, we want to be vigilant about what it might be on the, uh, what is out there in other places. We want to be careful about how we deal with it. But we do want to say to people, come to Chinatown. Here we are. We're, again, careful, safe, and come join us. And cue the media dog pile. Over on MSNBC, Joe Scarborough is now claiming that everyone but Trump saw this crisis coming back in the beginning of January. We, we've heard, Zeke Emanuel, that nobody could have seen this coming. The fact is everybody saw this coming. Everybody saw this coming in early January. Which is super weird because the first mention of the coronavirus on Morning Joe was on January 24th, when Joe brought on an expert to say that people should be more worried about the seasonal flu. What I would suggest, however, mm -hmm. is that Americans take this as a wake-up call for seasonal flu. We are not out of the flu season. We've already had 15 million cases of the flu in the U.S., 140,000 hospitalizations. 54 children have died, almost as many what? as have died from the novel coronavirus. The Hill is now running articles criticizing Trump for not restricting enough travel from China before this whole thing started unraveling. But back in January, while Morning Joe was busy telling people that everybody would just get the sniffles, The Hill was running articles critical of the administration for putting in travel restrictions at all, quoting WHO officials who said the rules would unnecessarily interfere with international travel and trade and might increase fear. The New York Times was running pieces criticizing Trump's travel restrictions from China as an emotional or political response instead of one grounded in science. Now, they're running op-eds accusing Trump of ignoring, downplaying, or dismissing the problem, saying that he failed when it mattered the most. So Trump's damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. He restricted travel from China a full month before Nancy Pelosi went on TV telling people they should keep coming out to crowded parades. But now, it's all Trump's fault for not taking this whole thing seriously enough in the first place. He doesn't get any credit when the stock market is up, but when it crashes in the middle of a pandemic, that's all his fault. Then when he suggests that we need to get it back up and running as soon as possible, he's accused of wanting everybody to die from a disease. And liberals, who have not offered one single better solution to solve any of these problems, are now magically claiming that they saw it all coming. And see, this is what the left will do what they always do. They're going to try to rewrite history, and they expect that you will be dumb enough to buy it. So now we have to launch an investigation into the White House to find out what Trump knew and when he knew it, because New York's governor of almost a decade hadn't stockpiled enough ventilators. And somehow, that's also Trump's fault, by the way. And this investigation will be led by the same House Democrats who were telling people to keep partying in the street and cramming themselves into subway cars back in late February, and it'll be reported on by the same media who didn't give a crap 
about the coronavirus until late January, whose own experts were saying that this was basically the flu and who were poo-pooing travel restrictions as a knee-jerk reaction and were all too happy to call it the Wuhan virus until they decided that was racist when Republicans said it. And we're supposed to roll over and accept all of this as Donald Trump's fault and that the liberals were brilliantly predicting this back in December. Okay. See, you want to know why so many people are still ignoring social distancing guidelines? Why they're torn over just how seriously to take all of this? Why they're so skeptical of news reports telling them to stay home and it's been so hard to convince them that this is a big deal because they have been lied to for so long by hypocritical politicians and the media, by the same people who are supposed to offer clarity and information, but do nothing but use death and despair to score political points, who seize on every chance to predict an apocalypse to trash a president they don't like. And now nobody believes the little liberal boy who cried wolf, because even in the middle of a crisis, he's still lying. And that's your Reality Check America. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook and Twitter, and stay sane out there.